Namo Bhutthaya. This is Abhinav Kulecha and I welcome you. In this uh, video, I am discussing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 38. The title of this discourse is The Longer Discourse on the Ending of Craving. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can check that discourse. Now, this discourse is basically uh, uh, Buddha, uh, Buddha's, one of the Buddha's disciples uh, having a wrong conception that this consciousness is permanent. Uh, Buddha never said that consciousness is permanent. He always said that the consciousness is dependently originated, right? This is because of that is, right? That was Buddha's teaching. And he was like wrongly representing Buddha's teachings. So Buddha clarified to him, to the mendicants about the teaching of the dependent origination. So this sutta is a deep sutta. It is uh, uh, maybe I will say for the advanced practitioners, uh, on the dependent origination, I am trying to simplify. I am also a student of the Buddha, so I am trying to simplify it so that we can all understand what are the main points from this sutta, right? So there was this Sati, the fisherman's son, who was a mendicant, and he was say following a who ha was following a harmful misconception uh, that, as I understand the Buddha's teaching, it is the very same consciousness that roams and transmigrates, not another. So Buddha definitely spoke about transmigration, that a consciousness transmigrates and you know uh, leads to a new body taking up the new consciousness. But it is never the same consciousness. Buddha said that every moment the consciousness is changing, right? Because of the five aggregates, form, feeling, mental formations, consciousness, they are all changing. So at one point, the, con the consciousness, it's like a river. It's like five... Uh, uh, five uh, rivers con con there is a confluence of five rivers at one time there is you cannot dip your feet in the river in the same river twice so the river is flowing so that way lot of so all these different things are just you know flowing so moment by moment the consciousness changes but he was having a harmful misconception that it is the same consciousness so the mendicants, so Buddha asked him that please come meet me. So there were quite a few instances where the, you know, in the other discourses also, where the mendicants did not understand the teaching properly and they were spreading the wrong teaching and Buddha used to, used to call them and say that, you know, this is the wrong teaching that you are spreading. I never told this way. So again, the same thing happens here also. So Buddha asked Sati, what is, uh, what is the that consciousness which you are saying is that, it's the same consciousness. So Sati says that he is the speaker, the knower, who experiences the results of the good and bad. So so Buddh, so Sati said that there is one awareness, one consciousness, which is experiencing everything, the good and bad deeds. So Buddha says, silly man, who on earth have you ever known me to teach in that way? Haven't I said in my many ways that the consciousness is dependently originated? Since consciousness does not arise without a cause, but still you misrepresent me by your wrong grasp, harm yourself and create much wickedness. This will be for your lasting harm and suffering. So misrepresenting Buddha's teachings causes harm to the person, right? So Buddha is talking that I already told you that it is dependently originated. There has to be a cause for the consciousness to arise. So still you are saying the wrong thing. So then Buddha, Buddha then gave a discourse to the mendicants who were present there and uh, Buddha said that uh, Buddha is basically saying that consciousness is arising dependent upon the very same condition according to the very same condition dependent upon which it arises. That means there has to be a condition and according to that, that particular consciousness arises. So Buddha is giving the example of that a consciousness that arises dependent on the eye and sights is recondent as eye consciousness. Consciousness that arises dependent upon our ear and sound is recognized as ear consciousness and so on. So we have five senses and six senses. Six is like the mind. So whatever we basically, whatever comes in contact with our eye field, corresponding consciousness gets generated. Right. So consciousness just doesn't exist by itself. That is what Buddha is trying to teach. It arises in the moment when that particular sense base interacts with the outside element and then that particular so buddha is now giving here the analogy of a, like a fire that fire also is basically 
it's like fire which is reckoned according to the very same condition dependent upon which it burns for example buddha says that a fire that burns dependent upon logs is reckoned as log fire a fire that burns dependent upon twigs is known as twig fire so depending upon the type of the thing that is burned accordingly the type of fire is so it's not consciousness as such it's the kind of nature of con- like eye consciousness or ear consciousness or tongue consciousness for example you put something on your tongue like a, a sweet a sweet uh, you know jaggery or something so that jaggery when you put it on your tongue the tongue senses it and there is correspondingly a consciousness a tongue consciousness uh, that gets generated right so consciousness arises because of something else it's not independent right so then buddha is talking about the there is like a question answer buddha is doing with the mendicants that mendicants do you see that this has come to be that means this consciousness has come to be that means it has arisen buddha mendicants said yes do you see that when the that fuel ceases it is being liable so basically buddha is saying is that this consciousness that arises is fueled by four things there are four fuels that buddha talks about when those four fuels cease then the consciousness also ceases right so then buddha talks about four fuels what are the four fuels that give arise arising to the consciousness so buddha says they maintain sentient beings that have been born and help those right so they those four fuels continue the uh, uh, this thing first is solid food whether if we whatever food we eat that is solid food second is contact contact means the the contact between the sense of sense the the sense organ and the outside object that contact gives arising to the consciousness third is the mental intention right mental intention any intention we take and fourth is the consciousness the fourth now buddha says now buddha goes into the uh, explanation of the dependent origination so there are like you know it's like a wheel this gives rise to that that gives rise to that right so then buddha says what is the source origin birthplace and inception of these four fuels craving what is the source of craving feeling what is the source of feeling contact what is the source of contact the six sense fields what is the source of the six sense fields name and form what is the source of the name and form consciousness what is the source of consciousness choices what is the source of choices ignorance so here basically buddha is talking about that this whole reality this whole creation that has come into is basically because of this dependent origination cycle right that because of ignorance choices happen choice because of choices consciousness happens because of consciousness name and form happens because of name and form six sense fields happen because of six sense fields contact happens because of contact feeling happens because of feeling craving happens and and so on which leads to birth re- old age and death and all the entire mass of suffering that we are into right so this is the teaching of buddha that totally is you know it's is a, a stand out from the you know teachings in the vedas about a permanent self that exists and everything because buddha said that there is no permanent self everything is just arising at this moment basis something else right so once we understand this then we start to just witness whatever is arising right now we do not grasp we do not wish to be reborn right we just are witnessing that how we have created our suffering for ourselves and now we have a clear path to come, to get out of that suffering right otherwise if we have if we remain obsessed with this you know who am i who who i will be in future lives what i have been in past lives all these wrong views that i have a permanent self then we will remain remain in, uh, uh, within trapped in samsara right so this is buddha's core teaching i am also trying to grasp this teaching you know in my own way trying to you know understand read even i will start i will i will be trying to read the abhidhamma right which is a the philosophical treatises deeper treatises on the teaching of the buddha a lot of work has to be done because this dependent origination if you understand you understand the entire buddha's teaching and if you don't understand dependent origination that you don't understand buddha's teaching right okay so so buddha says that when ignorance fades away ignorance of what ignorance of the four noble truths what are the four noble truths there is suffering there is a cause for suffering which is 
which is craving there is a way to end the suffering there is a suffering can be ceased and the way to end the suffering is the noble eightfold path if we do are ignorance ignorant of that then comes the choices then comes the feeling then comes the contact all these things happen right so buddha says when ignorance fades away and ceases with nothing left over choices cease when choices cease the consciousness ceases and consciousness ceases name and form ceases when name and form ceases the sixth sense field ceases when the sixth sense field ceases contact ceases when contact ceases feeling ceases when feeling ceases craving ceases when craving ceases grasping ceases when grasping ceases continued existence ceases when continued existence ceases rebirth ceases when rebirth ceases old age death sorrow lamentation pain sadness distress ceases this is how the entire mass of suffering ceases right so buddha's teachings was all about suffering and ending the suffering so this is how buddha explained that when you overcome ignorance then everything else can be overcome the entire suffering can be overcome right and then buddha talked about that uh, uh, when you understand this will you go back in the past and, and ask did we exist in the past did we not exist in the past what were we in the past how were we in the past after being what what we will what did we become in the past so buddha always did never encourage this quest, questioning about going and inquiring about the past or the future because he said that it is irrelevant now what when you understand the dependent origin origination in detail you just apply it in the present mode you neither get lost in the past nor you get lost in the unnecessary questions in the future right so buddha said that knowing and seeing in this way mendicants would you turn forward to the future thinking what will we exist in the future will we not exist in the future what will be in the future how we will be in the future after being what what will i become in the future so buddha said no point in discussing even the present buddha buddha says that even the present you should not have these questions am i am i not who am i what am i how am i this sentient being where did it come from and where will i go no questioning because see answers of these questions you will not get just understand this concept that how this this suffering has been created and then just work your way up and follow the noble eightfold path to clear this suffering right okay so then buddha is here talking about one more thing is that buddha always said that the teaching his teaching one has to learn by direct experience and not by only why buddha has said something or some learned teacher has said something so buddha says that do you say do you agree with the teaching only because that the teacher is respected and you speak out of respect mendicants no said no uh, do you say that uh, agree with the teaching only because the ascetic says no or or right so on, and then buddha even said that do you believe that the observances and boisterous superstitious rites or the various ascetics are essential buddha so mendicants said no so buddha said aren't you speaking only of what you have known and seen and realized so yes sir so what buddha is basically saying that encouraging people is that you see things from your own direct experience buddha has given the teaching buddha has shown the way but buddha says that you do your own direct experience that means you go in your meditation do follow the noble eightfold path and you let the path unfold let the teaching unfold for you do not just believe because buddha is saying something when buddha also was against these lot of these right rites and super boisterous superstitious rites of in the vedas of these pujas and everything you know buddha was again against this so buddha was not in fact it's not forbidden as such what i could read in the uh, commentary that it was not, it's not forbidden but buddha said it is not essential on the path right all these things these are actually choices only these pujas and these rituals and these rites are basically to get an get a desired result right and they keep you in this continued existence see understand this one thing once you are very clear that this is the origination of the suffering and you want to get out of the suffering then you don't you know for continuing yourself on in this in this samsara you don't do much you just barely survive yourself and keep keep looking into keep following the noble eightfold path that is our teaching so we don't engage in these rites and rituals right so buddha buddha said this this is coming 
coming uh, in the teaching. Now there is this thing that is coming about uh, uh, about uh, Buddha is uh, asking the mendicants that when when they see a sight with their eyes, if it's pleasant, they desire it. But if it's unpleasant, they dislike it. They live with the mindfulness of the body unestablished and their height, heart restricted. And they don't truly understand the freedom of the heart and freedom. So, what basically we do, what this basically people who have not yet developed their mindfulness. So, when you see something, a beautiful woman walking down the road and you know, you your lust arises in your mind and you get stuck in that, that pleasant feeling arises. And that pleasant feeling gives rise of gives rise to craving. Or if you see some garbage, then or you know a person who you don't like, then negative feeling arises, and then you get stuck to that feeling, and there's aversion that you get into that aversion thing. So all well, both these things are wrong. So Buddha said that. So first Buddha says about pleasant feelings. Being so full of favoring and opposing, when they experience any kind of feeling, present, unpleasant, neutral, they approve, welcome and keep clinging to it. This gives rise to relishing. Relishing the feelings is grasping. This grasping is a continue condition for continued existence. Continued existence is a condition for rebirth. Rebirth is a condition for old age and sorrow and everything. Right? So, then Buddha said about unpleasant feelings. When they know an idea with their mind, if it's Pleasant they desire, but if it's unpleasant they dislike. They live with their mindfulness unestablished, right? So it's basically sound, odor, flavor, touch, mind, eyes, everything. Right? Okay. This is a long discourse. Then Buddha talks about that they they take up a livelihood as a mendicant, they follow the precepts and, and it's all about the monastic conduct and everything. So now mendicant, what a mendicant does is that when they see a sight with their eyes, they don't get caught up in the features. And this is what friends we have to do. When this, when we see something, we should not get caught up in the features and details. If the faculty of sight were left unrestrained, bad unskillful qualities of covetousness and displeasure would become overwhelming. For this reason, they practice restraint, protecting the faculty of sight and achieving its restraint. Similar for nose, sound, odor, flavor, touch, and the ideas. So if even if you get an idea in your mind, you don't get caught up in the features and details. If the faculty of the mind were left unrestrained, bad, unskilled qualities will become overwhelming. They act with situational awareness while going out and coming back, while looking ahead. So all the movements in their daily life, they are aware of that. And then Buddha says, when they have this entire spectrum of noble ethics, that means following of the five precepts or the more precepts for a mendicant, sense restraint, they are restrained in their senses, they are mindful of their senses. And third is noble mindfulness, situational awareness, that means moving, wherever they are moving, standing, everything they are aware, they frequent a secluded lodging, that means they go in seclusion and then they meditate and then they get the four, uh, four absorptions, right? When they see a sight with their eyes, if it's pleasant, they don't desire it. If it's unpleasant, they don't dislike it. They live with mindfulness of the body established and a limitless heart. And they truly understand the freedom of heart and freedom by wisdom, where all those arisen bad unskillful qualities cease without anything left over. Right? So this is what Buddha's teaching was. And this is what we, in Vipassana meditation we do. That we just sit and we allow whatever is arising. We don't grasp, we don't cling. And we don't also uh, kind of are aversing or we are, don't run away from any of the difficult sensations, right? So this is the middle discourse, is 38 longer discourse on the ending of craving. Uh, it's a deep discourse. I've tried to simplify it as as, as much as possible. And uh, uh, right? do please read the discourse and you'll get your own insights. Do please share your insights in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.